Stephen Wagespach, the president, the CEO of the Louisiana Association of Business and Industry. Mr. Wags, welcome back to Keel. Always a pleasure. How you doing? Good morning, guys. How you doing today? All right. Your scorecard is out grading lawmakers for how they did. Um, we have a few in our area that are kind of on your all-star list, huh? Yeah, it was a good showing this year for um, for, uh, for Northwest Louisiana. You know, every year we put out a scorecard after session. And the reason why we do it is because legislators run to the Capitol each and every year, and they vote, and they debate, and they do all this stuff. And a lot of times, folks are back home living their life, running carpool, running their business. They don't have time to follow all that stuff. And so we put out the scorecard so people know exactly what's going on. And this is an election year. So our scorecard this year is not just about what happened this session, but more importantly, it tells the story of the entire four-year term we've had of Governor Edwards and how it's worked. And so this year, if you look at northwest Louisiana, we put a really focus on the term scores. And you've got folks like Raymond Cruz, Dodie Horton, Alan Seaball, Barrow Peacock, and Thomas Carmody, who were awesome. They, they, they had a, over a four-year period. They represented your people well. They represented the state of Louisiana's taxpayers well. It was, a, it was a fantastic showing for those guys over the four years, and we're proud to give them the respect and, uh, and credit they deserve. Wags, talk to us a little bit about the metrics that you use to grade your legislators. Yeah, a lot of groups in the state, what they do is after session, they go in a room and they decide who they like or don't like and put out, you know, um, a, a scorecard like that. You know, we're the only ones that kind of use metrics and data. Every year we pick the most important bills that threatens employers, that threatens free enterprise. And those are the ones we grade. We put a spreadsheet at the back of the scorecard. If folks want to read about it, they can go to lobby scorecard, excuse me, lobbyscorecard.org, lobbyscorecard.org, and you can get all the information and facts and bills we use. It's all data right there for the taking. Wags, I was looking at the scorecard a little bit, and, you know, I know this was probably a half, a glass half empty, but I wanted to look at people at the bottom of the list. Who are the worst? And I didn't, and I didn't see that. Maybe am, am I looking at the wrong place? Oh, it's in there, and this is the teaser, so that everyone has to go to the website and check it out. You'll find all of those goodies and more. If you're one of those people like Aaron, where you want to see the glass half empty instead of half full, go in and check it out because you'll find a lot of good information. And let me just tell you one little sneak peek on what you're going to find there. There's a game that happens in the Capitol. People that want to grow up and stand against free enterprise and against taxpayers, a lot of times they don't want to tell their constituents. They want to kind of do it in the dark at night. And so there are a couple of committees in the Capitol that are known to be graveyards for good ideas. And they do that because they don't want these bills to get to the Senate floor or the House floor for votes because that, they know that's where people are looking the most, and that's where our scorecard is going to pick it up. And so in the Senate, there's a committee called the Senate Judiciary Aid Committee, known as Jude A. And over the last four years, that committee, has killed one tort reform bill after another, one after another, and it's really held us back on trying to improve our legal climate. Awesome. And you got a couple of folks in your area who are, are who are the lead batters on that committee okay. who killed a lot of those bills. Late name names. Well, you got Senator Gaddy and Senator Milkovich who have served on that committee. And look, they will sit here and tell you that look, tort reform is bad for Louisiana. That we need to trust an aggressive trial bar to make good things happen, as compared to a free market and and, and, and parity in the courts. Obviously, we strongly disagree with that position. And I think most of the businesses and, and common sense folks we talk to strongly disagree. But they have a lot of power in a committee in the dark of night in one little in one little hallway conference room. And that power is about to be exposed this year in the election cycle. And we think it will be changed for good next year in the Capitol. Off the top of your head, legislators who... Legislators who uh, who disappointed you with their performance, who you thought would be more business friendly, perhaps more conservative, and uh, on the on the other side of that coin, legislators who surprised you, who maybe went a little more business friendly, free enterprise backing than you anticipated. Well, I would tell you, look in your region, guys, you've really got a strong delegation. I mean, I'm going to mention the names again: Raymond Cruz, Dodie Horton, Alan Seaball, Barrow Peacock. Thomas Carmody, those are the folks who over the four-year term really excelled, and, and you should be proud of, of those folks. And, and a couple other things. you got to almost put somewhat of an asterisk on everything because the last four years, Governor Edwards has pushed an agenda, very aggressive, very anti-business, very anti-taxpayer in that capital, and these folks have had to legislate, quite frankly, in a very hostile environment. If you go back and remember, in 2016, there was a massive increase in the sales tax rates in this state. In 2017, he tried to replace that 
with what he calls a commercial activity tax, which basically would have decimated our economy, and these legislators stood against that. The next year in 2018, there were a host of good reforms like pension reform, Medicaid spending reform, a constitutional convention to be called, all of those opposed by the administration and killed. And these legislators supported many of those efforts. And then this year, we saw tort reform die by the opposition by the administration. We saw some taxpayer fairness bills vigorously opposed by the administration. So to pick on legislators in some ways is unfair because the governor put them in one tough spot after another over the last four years. Wags, let me ask you, I, I put a piece up a few months ago. I'll find it and we'll put the link back up. How our area specifically and, and the Monroe area too are really underrepresented on the big meaningful committees in Baton Rouge. What can we do to change that? I mean, what's the answer to that? Because I looked, I mean, I went committee by committee and it's not good. I mean, what I would tell you is birds of a feather flock together, okay? When you start putting the, the leadership teams of the Capitol next year, when the governor sits down with legislative leaders and says, what should our committees look like? What should the agenda look like? You want the people in that room to be ones that understand the business community, understand the pre enterprise, want the big reforms to happen in Louisiana that we've long talked about but never had the guts to do. You want those people who are change agents in that room. That's not what we've had the last four years. We've had an administration and many in the Senate leadership who want to do the opposite. They want to protect the old school, make sure the status quo isn't bothered. So if you want good folks like you have in your region to be in the spots where they can truly make a difference, we need a, we need the voters to run out to the polls this fall, send a strong message to the Capitol that the same old, same old just ain't going to cut it this time. We want big ideas. We want big reforms. And we want a leadership team that will make that happen. And if that's the environment that's created in the Capitol, Trust me, Northwest Louisiana is filled with people who look like that, and they're going to start filling those roster slots more than you can believe. Stephen Wag is back, Louisiana Association of Business and Industry. Thank you, sir. Thanks, guys. Have a great day. Mm -hmm.